Hey everyone, this is the artist review of the Samsung Galaxy S21 and the Note 20. In this review, I will not be covering phone-specific details like specifications, benchmarks, gaming, multitasking, download speed, all those stuff. I just want to show you the drawing performance and talk about the drawing experience on these two phones. This, by the way, is the S21 Ultra. The drawing performance should be very similar to the S21 and S21 Plus. The main difference would be the size of the display. Here we have a 6.8 inch Super AMOLED display. And the main difference between the S21 phones versus the Note 20 is the refresh rate on the Note 20 is 60 Hz, whereas on the S21 phones it's 120 Hz. The difference in drawing performance is with the Note 20, there is more noticeable latency in the form of a larger gap as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. On the S21, the gap between the line and the pen tip is much smaller. Having 120Hz refresh rate is certainly nice, but the overall drawing experience on the Note 20 is still very positive, very satisfactory. So not having 120Hz is, in my opinion, not a deal breaker. Anyway, in this video, I will be using the Samsung S21 because the drawing performance between this and the Note 20 is very similar, except on the Note 20, the gap is just slightly larger. Both phones support the S Pen, but for the Samsung S21, the S Pen is not included. For the Note 20, the S Pen is stored here at the slot at the bottom. So if you want to buy the S Pen, my recommendation is to buy one that has a thicker diameter so that it's more comfortable to hold. The S Pen alternative is this Stadler Norris Digital. This comes in two sizes. The one that I have here is the first model, so the diameter is quite small. This is about as thick as a typical wooden pencil. The second model is called Jumbo, which has a thicker body. That's the one I would recommend because it's more comfortable to hold. The main functional difference between the S Pen and the Norris Digital is with the Samsung S Pen, there is this side button here that you can use for shortcuts. The type of shortcuts you can use will depend on the apps you use. Anyway, I don't really use this button and I press this button accidentally, unintentionally more often than I want to. So my recommendation is actually to get the Norris Digital over the Samsung S Pen because the performance is very similar. And with the Norris Digital, there is no side button here. Both stylus do not require battery to work, so you don't have to charge them. You may not know this, but the drawing experience on the Samsung phones that support the S Pen, the drawing experience is significantly better compared to the iPhone simply because there is proper stylus support. And with proper stylus support, you get palm rejection, pressure and tilt sensitivity and the drawing apps on Android are pretty good as well. So these are some of the drawing apps that I have here. The main ones that I use are Huion Sketch and Concepts. Personally for me, I don't draw with the phone in vertical orientation because this is a very weird aspect ratio for me. So I always use the phone in landscape orientation. Let me show you the line quality test. Let's test for diagonal line jitter. I'm trying to draw the lines as slowly as possible without shaking my hand and it's not that easy because the screen is quite smooth. Anyway, the diagonal lines, they are quite straight with very minimal jitter or wobble. When I drew those lines, my hand was quite shaky so I'm very surprised to see the lines are still straight. Now my hand is more stable. So yep, definitely no issues when it comes to drawing diagonal lines slowly. This is a very accurate pen. Initial activation force is certainly not as good compared to pen tablets, pen displays or the Apple Pencil. Here I'm trying to create tapered strokes. 
And as you can see, I am not able to taper the strokes smoothly. The ends of the strokes are rounded off. You cannot get a sharp tapered end. So that's the limitation with the initial activation force. Line transition from thin to thick is quite smooth. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there is actually a cursor on the display because this is an active stylus. I cannot remember how many levels of pressure this pen or the S Pen has. Dots can be placed easily by tapping on the display. There is also tilt sensitivity, so you can... There is also tilt sensitivity, so you can draw with the side of the stylus to get those broad strokes. Tilt works with the Norris Digital as well as with the Samsung S Pen. Before I draw, I want to test for palm rejection. So it seems like I am not able to draw with my finger, but I can still use finger gestures. When I draw with my pen, it works. When I draw with my finger or when I place my palm on the display, I cannot introduce any straight strokes. So palm rejection is perfect. It's flawless. Not all apps will support palm rejection though. Let's draw something. I'm drawing with the phone on the table because if I were to hold the phone and draw, my lines will be more wobbly than usual. My lines here are already quite wobbly. If I were to hold the phone and draw, it's going to be more shaky and more wobbly. So it's easier for me to have the phone on the table and draw. This app that I'm using is Huion Sketch and it works really well. It works surprisingly well actually. I think the developer or Huion is trying to um, copy some of the Procreate features. So you see the controls here uh, to adjust the brush size and opacity. Procreate on the iPad also has those controls there on the left side. And there is this pinch and zoom shortcut, which is very useful, which is also available on Procreate. Oops, the line is too thick because I drew with the pen at an angle. So it went into the tilt, um, tilt brush. Even though the initial activation force is not as low compared to pen tablets or pen displays, um, the overall drawing experience here is actually still quite good. I mean, I'm still able to get the thin lines to come out just the way I expect them to. So I don't really have any uh, issues uh, when it comes to drawing, at least when it comes to drawing this vehicle here. The main issue when it comes to drawing is actually the smoothness of the display because this display is quite smooth and the pen, both the Norris Digital and the Samsung pen, they glide on the display very smoothly, almost too easily. So it's going to take some time to get used to how smooth the display is. So this will affect um, accuracy obviously because it's a bit more difficult to control the pan as it glides so easily. The alternative is to apply a matte screen protector on the display but that is going to affect image quality very significantly. I have drawn this part too close to the left side so let me move it to the right side. I'm going to use the lasso tool to draw this selection. And let's see if I can cut this and move this to the right side. Okay, 
Right, great. I managed to fix that mistake. Okay, let's draw the wheels here. Notice the lines are quite thick. Um, that's the tilt brush. The main downside for me when it comes to drawing on this phone is the display is a bit too slippery for my liking. It's good for taking notes because when you write, you want to write fast, but when you're drawing, sometimes you just want to slow down to draw the details more accurately. But the uh, screen being so slippery uh, will affect accuracy or how slow or how careful you can draw. By the way, I'm drawing with the Norris Digital because there is no side button for me to hit accidentally. So um, on this phone, it's not easy to draw straight lines because of how slippery the display is. But other than that, I'm actually quite happy with the result. So with the tilt brush, I can paint in all these areas easily. I'm using the tube brush instead of the paint bucket because I want to still see the texture. The Samsung S Pen with its rubbery or felt like tip is still quite slippery, quite smooth on this display. There isn't much difference between drawing with the Samsung S Pen versus the Norris Digital. This is my usual loose and sketchy style. And this brush that I'm using, which is the HB Pencil, um, it works really nicely. I like the texture a lot. Overall drawing experience is good, except it's not easy to draw straight lines. It's not easy to draw that accurately because the display is quite slippery. I think the black and white version looks better. I did not have to draw tapering strokes earlier, but if I need to draw tapering strokes, for example, if I need to taper the hair, you can see I am not able to draw those beautiful tapering strokes. So um, the subject matter that you draw will obviously matter. If you draw comics that require tapering strokes, then it's going to be an issue. I don't suppose people who are drawing on phones are looking to produce professional art. This is really for casual sketching. And as a device that you always have on hand for casual sketching, um, the drawing performance is actually pretty good. If you want to draw more accurately, obviously I would recommend um, you going with proper tablets or pen displays. But for quick sketches, um, yeah, this phone works really well. And this drawing performance is the same as what you will get on the Samsung Note 20. Do I have any issues with tapering strokes here? Well, um, I don't think so. I mean, I can still get the thick lines to taper into thin lines. It's just that the end of the stroke is not going to be that sharp. But as you can see, um, at least for this particular sketch, the inability to taper the strokes uh, is not... I mean, it doesn't really affect this sketch. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Alright, so thanks for watching. I hope this review is useful in some way. See you in the next video. Bye!